In these videos, I will take a look at some of the comments that you, the viewer, have shared with me. Some of these comments may be posted on my YouTube channel. Some of them may not be, depending upon their content. I use this as an opportunity to answer questions, address criticisms, and acknowledge criticisms, of course, and direct the conversation, keep it going in the manner of which this YouTube channel is intended, meaning it is a grammar channel. This is a channel to talk about correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public by Colin David Ivan Colin Miller. And so that's the main purpose of this channel. So if you see a comment in this comments video that has not been posted on my channel, I'm probably using it as an example as to what not to post in the comments field. This is definitely a learning place, a place for learning where I teach not only the grammar, but also the psychology of the grammar. One other thing, I don't ever take anything personal. It's never personal. Although it may seem like it is at times, it's not, it's not at all. And I highly recommend everyone out there commenting, follow the same protocol. Don't take anything personal that I say. What you put in is what you get out. The energy that you bring here, I will most likely either give back to you, maybe a little bit, or maybe a thousandfold. It just depends upon how you approach me. This is my vessel. There are terms and conditions. If you comply with them, everything's peachy. If you don't, well, you get what you get. You don't throw a fit. Without further ado, let's get to the comments. Welcome to another holiday 2022 video. This one is this week's edition, holiday edition of the comments video in which I take your comments that you leave on my channel as guests aboard my vessel and I address them, whether they're critiques, questions, um, just compliments, whatever it is, I'll give you my thoughts, as I explained during the intro. So the first one I'm looking at comes from someone named Dion Wasa, and they say, seems to me we participate in another entity's technology, whether, I think that's a typo, we know it or not, or like them or not, i.e. Egyptian hieroglyphs, alphabets, how is correct sentence structure going to get us back to sensing each other's volition like all life forms on earth do? How is correct sentence structure going to get us back to sensing each other's volition like all life forms on earth do? Well, Dion, as you may or may not know, this is a channel concentrating on teaching and learning the technology of correct sentence structure, communication, parsi, syntax, grammar. I'm a grammar tutor. I teach the grammar. This is my channel. I have about 500 videos on here teaching that technology. Also, the learning part would be where you come in. Uh, that's the only purpose and function of this channel is to learn this grammar. So if you're here for any other reason, um, you're probably in the wrong place. But if you're here to learn the grammar, then welcome aboard. Having said that, I'll address your last sentence, your question there. How is correct sentence structure going to get us back to sensing each other's volition like all life forms on earth do? There's a couple assumptions in there, Dion. The first assumption is that we, I'm guessing by the word us you're using, you are including your fellow mankind. Is that your perception that we or us don't sense each other's volition? Because I sense others individual uh, volition every single day with or without correct sentence structure I'm pretty good at sensing volition judging by words and performances so that's an assumption on your part um, I'm not assuming that I'm guessing it's an assumption unless you can give closure to your knowledge that us don't possess the capacity to sense others volition uh, but if you're only speaking for yourself well then Perhaps you lack the capacity to assess others' volition. And then to move on to the next assumption, you say, like all life forms on earth do. Now you're making a claim 
for all life forms on earth and I'm not quite sure how you could possibly certify that how do you know that that's an assumption just like the first part was an assumption so you must be very careful about that with correct sentence structure we do not make claims for others we only make claims for ourselves and then Dion says are not all the alphabets closed source are not all the alphabets closed source well not to my knowledge because every single individual that i know who is a man or a woman uses some form of an alphabet if it were closed source they wouldn't be doing that would they when something is closed it's closed off you don't have access to it it's it's behind a door or a wall or something you don't have access to it so therefore it's closed these alphabets are clearly in public use so my answer to that would be no Ameli Apui says hey gratulations I think they mean congratulations which I don't know why they would not include the CON on there which just simply means together just one finding about the shaka symbol in this link is about shark eyes in this four minutes video you can see obama making that sign too can you elaborate on that i do not sleep anymore researching for answers uh, no i can't elaborate on why obama would use it that's his thing his volition whatever he thinks it means is what it means to him i guess you'd have to ask him for closure on that i've given my closure on it to you I've shared the link to the video I've done my homework I've used the etymology dictionary I've studied into the Hawaiian language I gave closure to my sources as to what it means for me in my correct sentence structure communication policy syntax grammar contracts uh, at this now space juncture I have no correct sentence structure contracts with anyone named Obama so therefore the word shaka has no relevance or no importance in that context um, so that's that's how correct sentence structure contract works you must be enjoined her on the meanings of the facts so as i've given my closure my correct sentence structure finite mean for shaka to you if you choose to participate with it that's up to you because the value of a thing is what you ascribe to it that's what it means to be a bank banker you put value into things and if you choose not to put value into my finite meaning of shaka, well, then we won't be contracting with that word. It's as simple as that. Thank you for the comments. Another comment from Ameli Apui. And they say, in the minute 127, I see a Q and a U. Oh, they're not talking about this video. They're, again, sharing another link, which I didn't address in the last comment where they shared a link. Um... But I would appreciate if, unless you're trying to give evidence to a claim that you're making, a continuance of the evidence, I'd appreciate it if you don't share links to other channels, especially to the channel that this individual is sharing, uh, which I believe is to the Syntax Learning Center. And by the way, I did click on the link, and I did go to the minute 27 mark, and I have no idea what this individual is talking about. Because at that point, it just has a... a a logo like a cartoon that says uh, quantum hyphen grammar or something and I have no idea what they're talking about so that's the point of me pointing uh, posting this comment and commenting on it is I'd appreciate it if you don't share links to outside channels especially what I consider outside hostile channels thank you next comment comes from river flow and they say, if control is negated by contra, so is contract. Yeah? And then for whatever reason, they deleted the comment. But I was fortunate enough to catch it. And I did. And the short answer to that, river flow, is yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are 100% correct. And I did a salvage claim on the word contract. That's why I spell it C O N hyphen t-r-a-c-t to make sure that that particle c-o-n is separate differentiated 
from tract. So you're supposed to take it con hyphen tract together along the same track. That's what that means. If you don't hyphenate it, then it's then it can be construed as contra, which means no contract. Next comment comes from J.A. Richardson. And they say, I understand that this is a grammar channel and that you are providing clarity and closure on the grammar. But, now this is a psychological uh, aspect that I'll delve into here. And it has mostly to do with conveyances and adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. Where someone will say something like, I know this, that, and a third, but, as soon as you say but, you have just negated everything that came before it. So we can say in this instance where he says, I understand this is a grammar channel. What he's really saying is that, uh, like if you say, you know, um, just as an example, I know you're really busy. Uh, I know that uh, you're, you're with your family and, uh, and you're on vacation, but could you please do me this favor and come to the office and take care of these papers and blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's like your boss, if you have a boss or, or, some, or work calling you like that, it's like they're, they're trying to soften something that they know they're probably not supposed to be saying and they're kind of probably know that they're being disrespectful or violating your personal vessel terms and conditions of some sort. That's a tactic. It's but is like you, you're like prefacing something and then totally negating it when you say but. <laughs> so let's move on and see what uh, J.A. has to say here. But... In this case, you should also be providing closure on the volition of tough love. Now, J.A. is telling me what I should or shouldn't do. Now, this is a huge psychological hurdle for some. And it's understandable for beginners such as J.A., novices who don't have a grasp on the grammar. Um, however, I will say this as a caveat. In every comment that you make, there is a little box that pops up. I, I've made it this way where YouTube will say, you know, see the terms and conditions or, or something like that or see the rules of the comments field. And you click on that and it will tell you that one of the terms and conditions is or one of the terms and conditions is please don't tell others what they should or shouldn't do. That's a presumption. That's presumptuous and that's a trespass. But people do it all the time because they're so used to it. And that's why I have no problem saying it ad nauseum again and again and again. Please don't do that here. This is a vessel for learning the grammar and this is a psychological portion of that. That's why I allow comments like this. So let's get on to see what J.A.'s volition in, in violating the terms and conditions is. In this case, you should also be providing closure on the volition of tough love. Okay, so he's talking about the reaction I did to Russell J. Gould's uh, video, Piercing Dynasty, where I bring up, where Russell talks about it's okay to fight because there's a such thing called tough love, to paraphrase. That's Russell's term, tough love. <clears throat> now, J.A. is telling me that I should close, uh, provide closure on the volition of tough love. How can I possibly do that when I'm me and I don't use that term, I'm commenting on what someone else, a term someone else used. And it's an adjective pronoun. So J.A., if you want closure on tough love and how he meant it, if you want closure on it, if that's important to you, then you would have to reach out to him because I did not make that claim. What I'm doing in the video is simply commenting on the claim, giving my thoughts on it. I'm not telling anyone else what they should or shouldn't do. I'm just giving you my perspective from a grammatical, psychological standpoint with correct sentence structure, which is based in peace and neutrality, rule one, rule equal, honor and grace. Committing violence and assaulting someone as a form of love does not fit into that those principles, as far as I know, unless you yourself, J.A., know something about that that I don't, in that maybe you do participate with, with tough love in that same sense that Russell does, that 
that fighting's okay. Now, keep in mind, if someone comes onto my vessel and they violate my terms and conditions in a threatening, malicious, and violent fashion, well then, those principles are off the table. Has nothing to do with love. Has nothing to do with toughness. It has to do with me providing safety for my vessel and vial spear, in which I will do what I have to do to keep that safety. And if violence is a part of that, then violence is a part of that. Uh, there's a cost for everything, pretty much, that we do. Like in my domicile contract, right in the contract, I put in there, and you know, to paraphrase, if you are a malicious trespasser, you do not permit, have permission to come to this location, and you come anyways and you trespass, then the cost of that trespass may be your life. I'm making you aware that there is a price for it. There's a fee for freight, and it could be your life. But that has nothing to do with toughness or love. That has to do with the safety of the vessel. As you and I speak in fiction babble English, when you talk with people because you need to meet them on a level playing field and they won't understand you otherwise, how about instead of just critique tough love because of the incorrect use of grammar or uh, incorrect use of grammar, how about offering closure on what would be correct use of tough love in a sentence? Wow, that was a mouthful. Okay, so now J.A. is telling me what I need to do. He's telling me because I need to meet them on a level playing field and they won't understand you. Now he's making an assumption as to what the other people understand or don't understand. And what J.A. perhaps, perhaps would need to understand is that I've been speaking with hundreds of people for five years. Hundreds of people from all different cultures all over the earth having consultations, doing workshops. I have no issue or problem with anyone's cognition. If I can get someone on a geometric level playing field, i.e., one form of that is a video communication where I see you, you see me, there is never an issue with cognition. Never. The only issue with cognition comes in comments fields. And that's why ad nauseum I say again and again and again, if you want closure, you want to talk about something, email me and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation rather than just rattling on in the comments field because comments fields are not efficient means of closure for anything um, of this nature. And that's again with five years of YouTube experience running a YouTube channel and seeing comments. That's just time on the water, I guess. Just critique tough love because of the incorrect use of grammar, which I did do in the video. I said it's an uh, adjective pronoun. How about offering closure on what would be correct use of tough love? Well, I wouldn't do that because I don't use tough love, as I explained earlier. I wouldn't do that because I don't participate with that uh, concept. Even if you can't know exactly what he means by tough love, such as in his case, tough love might mean the might make right. Now Jay is getting into assuming uh, what Russell means or doesn't mean, which again, you know, I would encourage if, if J.A., if you are serious about this and you really want to know what he meant and it's that important to you, just, just contact him somehow. Uh, I, I don't know how easy that is these days, but that, that's what I would recommend. I cannot make a claim for someone else and I'm not going to sit and speculate on those types of things. It's just not in my ballywick to do that. I look at what's in front of me through the lens of correct sentence structure, which is what I'm doing right now with your comment. What does tough love or having compassion for other individuals who may not have the same level of closure on the grammar as you or who may have less emotional maturity than you so reach for more than just critique for the sake of... Wow. This is a huge run-on sentence here. What does tough love or having compassion for other individuals who may not have the same level of closure on the grammar as you? What does tough love or... I think perhaps, and this is a guess, I perhaps J.A. lost his train of thought from the beginning of this phrase to the end. 
let's see if we can guess it, what, what's going on here. So he's critiquing me. He wants me to reach for more than just critique for the sake of critique. Give closure on what tough love and your volition means because I respect your opinion. I don't respect his, by his I mean RJG. Well, thank you for respecting my opinion. Opinions are opinion. It's no pen and contract. Um, just food for thought in the whole scheme of things. And what you just said there is exactly what I did in the video. It's not critique for the sake of critique. As I say, again, ad nauseum, this is all correct sentence structure psychology. Now, not making assumptions for people. And the critique of this video has to do with uh, the, uh, the reaction to the Russell J. Gould video is to show contradictions in what he says. That's part of it. And then also is to critique the grammar, which there was really little to no grammar in the video, as I predicted there wouldn't be. Um, but as I said in the video, you know, I'm going, which I'm not sure. It doesn't seem like you watched the whole video, J.A., but if you watch to the end, I do say, I don't know how much clearer I can make this, just the stunning magnitude of the contradictions that Russell J. Gould performs in his videos is mind-boggling to me. But again, you know, if it, you got to watch the whole the video the whole way through if you if you really want to see that. And that's a suggestion. Of course, I would never tell anyone what they should or shouldn't do. Just a suggestion. Um, thank you for the comment. This next comment comes from Ken McGuire. And this comment was written in anticipation of the Russell J. Gould reaction video before I published it. And he says, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, this will be good. I listened to the rhetoric on making life brighter and Russell sat there again with round and round of rhetorical title four flag stuff, all the generals that he wouldn't name for clarification that addressed him about the grammar and how right he was, etc. In a sense, what dynasty was pierced? The only difference between Russell and his way and the American way is he wants to become a private banker. And in essence, the rest of the people all need to become private bankers Okay, um, I'll say right there that, yeah, the piercing dynasty with the particle of negation ing in there, the title, he never really gives closure as to what that is. I don't even think that's mentioned in the video, is it? So that's an interesting title, which really means nothing because they gave no closure to it. And uh, as far as him wanting to become a private banker, I'm pretty sure he is a private banker. Just like I am a private banker. Everyone's a private banker. If you do banking, if you put value to things, um, just syntaxing a document makes you a banker. So uh, perhaps give some thought as to what a banker is in your construct. English language calls it secured party creditor. Um, I guess that's your interpretation of it. I don't participate with those types of terminologies because secured number one is past tense se is a particle of negation means no so it means no cure in the past tense i suppose um but those are all fiction terms and if you have success with using those terminologies using fiction against fiction and more power to you i'm a big fan of whatever works but that really has no place here and has nothing to do with correct sentence structure that's all Russell was trying to do, but in his own way, using some language from the Title IV flag that doesn't exist in any Library of Congress or any government platform for information. Um, that, that's, that's a fair enough statement. Although, I did find where... I hesitate saying this because I don't know if I still have access to it. But looking for a Library of Congress, looking through the Library of Congress or the Supreme Court website, I found a couple pages of Colin David Eiffel Wynn, Colin Miller, Correct Sentence Structure, Description, Rundown of Correct Sentence Structure, written by David. And it said that the Supreme Court or whatever had, had captured it, uh, that particular, those particular pages. I wish I could remember where it was that I saw that years ago. Not that that's relevant to anything I do uh, because, um, or anything you would do if you would learn correct sentence structure, if you would choose to learn 
by your comment, I can tell that you haven't learned it and you're probably a beginner just kind of floating around the edges of it. If you would commit to learning it, you will find that it doesn't matter what the fiction says. All that matters is what you say and if you can prove it and if you can hold your position. It's that simple. You just have to be correct. Additionally, if Russell was to speak in parse syntax grammar, or should I say it, correct sentence structure communication, parse syntax grammar, very few people would understand him because he'd probably sound like some Hewlett Packard computer. Um, I've never, ever, ever heard him speak in correct sentence structure. Just like I've never seen him write in 100% correct, correct sentence structure. So that'd be a tough one. For the, with the, I'm the, you know, all those little things that most people would say that doesn't sound right. Anyway, I'll quit venting. You get them, Jason. It's all about the mortgages, Jason. It always has been and always will. Um, you know, all is a different, difficult thing to prove. And again, if you would choose to learn this, which it's definitely, it's, I'm almost 100% convinced that you are a beginner if i had to say on a scale of one to ten your knowledge level would be a one or a two if that um if you choose to learn it statements like those um you probably would hesitate in saying that because that's not what it's all about by my perception it's what make it's what makes people do what they do to keep a roof over your head Loud and clear from Northern California, 707. Happy holidays. All right. Well, happy holidays. Thank you for your comment. And uh, you know, don't take what I say too personally there. Uh, Keith, Ken. Sorry about that. Don't take anything I say too personally, Ken. Um, because this is a grammar channel, as I made it clear earlier. I'm a grammar tutor. I teach this stuff, quantum grammar. I've t been teaching it for five years. If you want to learn it, hit me up at the email address at the bottom of your screen and get started. If not, study these 500 videos. Uh, but a lot of your questions or a lot of your venting or a lot of your issues that you bring up in your, in your comment would definitely be, definitely be ameliorated if you would take steps to begin learning the grammar and getting a grasp on what this exactly is and why I do these critiques on Russell J. Gould. Next comment comes from Stefan Schmidt. <laughs> and he says, thank you so much and happy holiday. I hope you will decide to continue with your YouTube videos. Greetings from Germany, Bavaria. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much, Stefan. And thank you for your membership. Um, I very much would like to continue with these videos. It just has to do with feasibility of it. Um, if I'm not getting the views and I'm not getting the subscribers and that means there's not a market for it and therefore investing that type of now space, hundreds of hours, thousands of hours into making videos and not getting any sort of rule one rule equal uh, balance back from it. That's going to balance that out in order to feed my family and keep a roof over my head. Well, then, you know, that's got to move on to something else. Right. Um, what I can just say is that I gave it my best shot. So we'll see. We'll see. Thank you for the comment. Next comments come from Stephen Schultz. He says, do you know who I am? Oh, he's referring to the Russell J. Gould video right on. Yeah. Colon space, David hyphen wing, colon space. Miller is the catalyst of quantum grammar. Gould got $150 from me for his program. Stephen, I'd have to ask you, is that 100% accurate? Is that 100% correct? You literally sent 150 US dollars to Russell J. Gould? Because I have a feeling that that's not what happened. I have a, because he, from my experience and my knowledge, doesn't do that. He always has intermediaries. He always has like uh, bulwarks in between him and you. So what I'm thinking happened is you sent your $150 to an intermediary that he authorized to sell live life claims, but you didn't actually send it to him. He's 
very careful uh, to have, I guess what you could say, um, I don't know, like a guardians in front of him so that none of this can touch him. That's why it's probably my guess as to why it's so hard to get a hold of anymore. But he requires a birth certificate to verify your <laughs> identity in order to remove you from the system. Yeah, okay. He then changes comments to fit his deception. Trust no man. And again, you know, I I don't know, Stephen, if he actually participates personally with his YouTube channel. I have a feeling, it's my guess, it's my gut instinct that he doesn't, that someone else does this stuff for him. Uh, but, you know, it's just a guess. Who knows? That is funny about the birth certificate, though. Uh, I've heard stories about that, how those people, I guess it would be, what, the Syntax Learning Center, that you send in your, your birth certificate or driving license or passport or something, your fiction uh, ident identifications to them. And they don't even do a one-on-one -on -one video with you to witness you. They just use your fiction documents and take your word for it, which... Is not a correct way to witness a live life claim. In order to witness a live life claim, you have to actually witness it. See, hear, at least. If you can't meet someone in person to do the witnessing, then you can do a video thing. But they don't even do that. So, I mean, it's up to those, you know, everybody has a choice how they want to participate with that. Uh, but it's not even a correct witnessing. Next comment comes from Silver and Entity. They say, did wool mankind consent to have the psychopaths trying to take over our world and control everything on our planet? Period. Now that sounds like a question, but it ends in a period. So I'm going to guess there's some sort of typo going on there. Um, and again, the psychopaths thing, I guess that's sovereign entity's perception that there are psychopaths trying to take over the world and control everything which implies that they haven't yet that the psychopaths have not taken over and controlled everything yet but they're trying to didn't the europeans invade america tried to exterminate the natives then put up their false flags yes the history tells us that they did And they did a pretty good job of exterminating the natives. From a place of grace, honor, and peaceful neutrality, what are you trying to achieve here, Jason? <laughs> well, sovereign entity, um, I feel like you've been here for a while. I feel like I've seen comments from you at least six months back. And so that tells me that I would reasonably guess that you've watched a good portion of my videos so I have to ask what your volition is in asking that question, what I'm trying to achieve. I have made it quite clear in my mind what I'm trying to achieve here. I've been, made no secret of it. What I'm trying to achieve is a cognition of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar um, for the people. I want to teach the grammar. And then in relation to the videos of uh, like the one that they are referring to with the Piercing Dynasty by Russell J. Gould, um, I'm trying to bring to light the landmines that are out there, the contradictions of someone who claims to have some sort of authority yet does not use correct grammar. If correct grammar is the most important thing, if that's the whole thing that he hinges his construct on, and yet he continuously makes mistakes across the board in his grammar. He talks about peace, neutrality, and love and kindness and yet he talks about, um, like when Winifred asked him, when will the world be ready for this system? And he says, are all the bad guys dead? No, he talks about kill you know, people being dead, implying killing or murdering. So many contradictions. Sovereign entity, I would have to make a guess, and this is a guess, not an assumption, presumption, just a guess, that you're basically new to this, that you didn't know the construct before David Windmiller passed. There were many, many, many years, decades worth of years, where David Windmiller and Russell J. Gould were doing seminars, and Russell was David's 
student, his second in command, whatever you want to call it, but David was in charge. All this technology was available to the public. No one ever said that you needed to get permission to use it. Matter of fact, David invited people, please come, please use it. He would put a live life claim template in his book and just use it. He would say, if you're walking into court and you have any problems, call me. My phone number's on my website. I've, even when that was going on, I've never known Russell J. Gould to put his email address or phone number out there publicly. Although the email address, what he did share it in a few videos. But then after David passed away, everything changed. Everything was modified. And as I stated in the video, in the reaction video, um, David once told me that one is opinion and two is certification. So he and Russell functioned in a capacity that they certified one another. So you have David and you have Russell. Two is certification. And he said, if you take one away, it's just opinion. So Russell's the only one left and it's just opinion. And it makes sense to me. And that was a very powerful statement that really attained relevance uh, the more time, time that passed after David's passing. Next comment comes from my friend and brother in Correct Sentence Structure Communication Parse Syntax Grammar Tutor, Colin Raven. And Raven says, how is comparing people of wrongdoing to female genitalia an honor? It is disrespectful to female anatomy to begin with and states nothing of wrongdoing of those people. 100%, brother. 100%. Just one of the myriad of contradictions and by my own personal perception, just leaves a bad taste in, in my mouth, just a, a bad feeling in my gut listening to that guy talk. And he is talking about Russell J. Gould in uh, that video, Piercing Dynasty. Thank you for the comment, brother. Another comment from Sovereign Entity. They say, profane, no contract, right? Well, Sovereign Entity, as I uh, mentioned before, you've been here for a while. So you, I have to guess, reasonably guess, that you're familiar with Parse and how to do it. So I ask you, have you parsed the word profane? Have you looked it up and found the earliest nativity root meanings of the particles of the word pro and fain? If you do that, you will certainly get closure on it and be able to answer your own question rather than have me just hand it to you. Because I find that knowledge sticks with people if they actually do the work themselves than have someone else do the work for them. Next comment comes from colon space, live hyphen life, colon man, which is of the live life with the man, which is not correct sentence structure because every correct sentence structure must start with a cause and then a concern, including names. So the colon would have to be tied up against live hyphen life. And I have told this individual uh, this in other videos and other comments. Uh, but again, you know, you can't force someone to correct something. I mean, that's what the fiction does. The fiction likes to force people to do something, but they cannot say that they're not aware of their grammar there is not correct. For the claim of the facts is with the performances by both David Wynn Miller and Russell J. Gould. And backwards, for both David Wynn Miller and Russell J. Gould of the performances are with the facts by the claim. How could you possibly certify that? I guess I'd have to know what his uh, finite meaning for fact is, finite meaning for claim is, and what he means by performances of David Wynn Miller and Russell J. Gould. Which Russell J. Gould performances is he talking about exactly? <laughs> is he talking about the ones that are on video but no one's ever seen? Or perhaps Live Life Man has those videos and perhaps he'd like to share them with the world so that we can wrap this up and get proof and evidence and find out. Or maybe that footage just doesn't exist. And Live Life Man is another one of Russell J. Gould's cult followers. 
That's also a possibility. If it were not for both of these men being partners and bringing forth this knowledge and for the capturing of the flag, capturing of the flag, again, ladies and gentlemen, is an act of war. War negates contract. Think about that live life man. Think about that of the live life with the man. Capturing is an act of war. Negates contract. Play the tape the whole way through. I highly recommend it. In your mind, psychologically, play that tape the whole way through. And the setting up of the venue, which has changed the paradigm, and, oh, change the paradigm, will change his modification. Modification is perjury of, uh, of the live life with the man. That's modification. So modifying the paradigm is not necessarily a good thing, unless you're in fiction, which is another possibility. I am replying in adverb verb. Yes, you are. Were you, were, where were you when they were capturing the flag? Who or what were you, do, who or what you were, were you doing in 1999? So let's take the or what out. Who were you doing in 1999? That's pretty funny. Well, as you may or may not know of the live life with the man, I came onto this technology in 2017. I have to think that you may be, this is a guess, being facetious, which is fine. I'm a big fan of uh, using clever humor, uh, even if it is meant in a negative fashion. Uh, but that's like asking, where were you? In 1492, when Columbus was discovering America, what were you doing in 1492? What were you doing in 1776? During the American Revolution, what were you doing <laughs> during World War II? What does that have to do with be, having correct grammar of the live life with the man? What were you doing when... Boxing was created. Even though you may be one of the best boxers in the world or was one of the best boxers in the world, like Roy Jones Jr., who was on top of the world and went from middleweight all the way up to heavyweight, winning all the belts until he won the heavyweight belt. He didn't invent boxing. But he became one of the greatest boxers of all time. He beat people that should have beat him. But he was better at it, even though he'd been doing it for a shorter amount of time. So you, this logic falls apart, what you're talking about here, this archaic form of uh, logical fallacy. What we're talking about are performances here of the live life with the man. And if you are aware that your name on here is not correct, and yet you choose not to correct it, um, that's up to you. You choose to participate with uh, that sort of incorrect grammar. Again, it's up to you. It's not something I participate with. And again, I'm sure I've offered this to you before. Uh, contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and have a 10 to 15 minute consultation with me and ask me whatever you want. Say whatever you want to me. Um, and I'll give you the closures that you're looking for very easily, quick, fast, and a jiffy. No problem, rather than going on and on in a comments field. Although it does give me material for these videos, which I do appreciate. Thank you very much. Also, there is a chance that you are someone that I do know uh, because you don't use your own correct name here. Uh, you're hiding behind a adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, incorrectly punctuated nom de guerre. You may be someone that I know that I've already blocked from my construct and already broken bulk with. So if that's the case, um, and you haven't brought that to my attention, then that tells me all I need to know about your character. Next comment comes from Dennis Ketchum. They say, interesting you are using the works of a guy who gave up the flag and touting him as the guy you learned from. Ooh. Is that what I'm doing, Dennis? I'm touting him as the guy I learned from? That's, 
only partially true. I learned correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar from colon raven hyphen farhide hyphen tohidi colon efferid. I did learn a lot of useful things from colon David hyphen win colon Miller, just as I learned a lot of useful things from colon Russell hyphen J colon Gould. But neither one of those men gave me closure on the grammar. Raven did. He got, well, he didn't give me the closure. He guided me to my own closure on the grammar. But it's interesting that you're saying this because you are literally showing me your knowledge level of the grammar. I'm guessing that you have not lost a drop of blood. I've not lost a drop of blood. Really? Hmm. I did lose a drop of blood once, but I found it luckily enough. You know, some people aren't able to find their blood, so, but I was able to find it. I'm blessed to have found my lost drop of blood. It's obvious you haven't lost one meal. Um, I have lost meals before, but again, I've been blessed and I've been able to find them and bring them home so that they're not put in the lost and found or put in an orphanage or anything like that. In the journey you are taking on other patriots' backs. Oh, what patriots would those be? Because you see, I don't participate with the terminology of patriotism. Don't, I don't like it when people patronize me. Do you like to be patronized? Um, does it feel good to you? Because if that's what you're into, if you're into, into being patronized and patronizing other people, cool. That's cool for you. Um, it's a misnomer. And anyone who participates with all that stuff, like patriotism, the left-right paradigm, Donald Trump, QAnon, where we go, when we go, all and all that stuff... It's all wonderful, well and fine and, and, and exciting and things like that, but it's not based on facts. It is not based on facts and it has no place in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. And neither do you have a place on this channel, Dennis, if you're not here to learn the grammar. You're obviously here to, dare I say it, troll. Thank you for your comment anyways, because it has provided me some, some uh, good material to share with the viewer, the psychology of how to deal with people like Dennis, who I, from my own perception, as the master of this channel, would file Dennis's comment in with the trolls who lack knowledge on the grammar because they have not demonstrated any knowledge of the grammar and their comment actually demonstrates a glaring lack of correct sentence structure knowledge. Because if they knew the grammar, they wouldn't say that. They would know what correct grammar is. They would know that there are mistakes all over Russell J. Gould's paperwork. You pull it up. I've done past videos on it, but that doesn't seem to matter to people like Dennis, ladies and gentlemen. They've come right out. Not him, but other people have come right out. I think Keeper of the Keen Beaner was their name. They told me the correctness doesn't matter. All that matters is getting behind and following Russell. <laughs> Which is great. I mean, if that's what floats your boat, that's what helps you sleep at night. To uh, blindly follow someone without question. Feliz Navidad. Thank you very much for joining me for this holiday edition of the, the comments. Uh, we kind of went, I guess as the children would say these days, hardcore on some of these comments. But that's okay. Because as I said before, I never take anything personally. And I would highly recommend that the viewer do the same. I would never tell you what you should or shouldn't do. But it would probably help you in your cognition of this grammar. If you develop... Thick skin, don't think, take things personally and try the best you can to step back and see things for what they are. And just follow some simple principles like, is there a continuance of the evidence for what I am participating with? Do I know these things to be 100% true? Can I prove them for myself? 
that the person telling me these things provides sources or a continuance of the evidence for what they're claiming. Because if not, then it's just like believing in, in, uh, in the Bible or, or the Quran or, or whatever. Just like believe if I told you that uh, I witnessed some aliens last night and I was abducted and uh, went up into outer space on a spaceship in a flying saucer, would you believe me? Or would you require proof? Bottom line. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. And uh, I wish you all nothing but the best. <laughs>